Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to download, or how to make, actually, a paper server in Minecraft 1.15.1. We're going to be going over every single step of making a paper server for Minecraft 1.15.1. First though, what is paper? Why should you use paper? Why does it matter for your Minecraft server? Well, paper is basically a fork of spigot, meaning any bucket or spigot plugins will work on paper. But the advantage of running your Minecraft server on paper is really this right here. It's stupid fast, and it is. It is very, very fast, very lag free, and very, very optimized when it comes to paper. So here's all the paper documentation, and it goes pretty much over everything here. We got an introduction to paper, what it does, all that stuff. But overall, the biggest thing is that paper adds in code optimizations in order to make things like entities and explosions and everything just work better in Minecraft on your server. It is impossible to run a server on 1.13.2, Minecraft 1.13.2, or higher. So from Minecraft 1.13.2 to Minecraft 1.15.1 currently, it is impossible to run a server on any of those versions if you are not running paper. And that is, I'm saying, a public server with more than like 20 players on it, right? If you have less than 20 players, you can run a server off of paper. Otherwise, you're going to need to use paper to be able to get people onto your server without incredible amounts of lag. Now, first and foremost, the video that we're making here and what the server we're going to be making in this video is not going to be a 24-hour server. It's just a server up on your own computer, which is meant for just your friends and your family. Paper can still have an advantage with that, though, if you're getting lag on your like vanilla server or on your bucket server or on your spigot server in Minecraft 1.15.1. Add in paper because it might optimize it enough to stop that lag for a personal server you're hosting on your computer already. Additionally, if you are, let's say, wanting to set up a test server with a lot of plugins and things like that, Paper can help optimize that on your own personal computer. That way you don't have to worry about you know buying a server through a host just to have a test server. You can still host that locally. Now, if you do want a server with just your friends and family, this tutorial is going to be perfect for you. However, if you want a public server, which is one of the main reasons you would run Paper is to have a public server with a lot of players on it, you're going to need to host your server at somewhere like Apex Minecraft Hosting. You can check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex and why it's so important to host on Apex Minecraft Hosting if you want a public server is because if you use the server we're making here publicly, people can figure out where you lived under your latitude and longitude coordinates, they can hit your internet offline and DNOS you and just cause all sorts of grief, and overall it's just not safe because it's using your own public IP address. On top of that, it's also going to be using your own computer's resources and running a server in Minecraft 1.15.1 is more resource intensive and you're going to need a decent computer to be able to do that at scale with multiple players on it, like 20 plus players on your server. So overall, we would recommend using Apex Minecraft Hosting to host a public Minecraft server. It's the only way to safely host a public Minecraft server. You can check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. And we actually use Apex ourselves to host our own public server, play.breakdowncraft.com. So nevertheless, if you want a server with you and your friends, this is a great way to do it. Otherwise, Apex Minecraft Hosting is the way to go. Or even if you do want a server with you and your friends and you don't have a good enough computer to run it, Apex Minecraft Hosting is the way to go. They have one-click paper setup over there. So nevertheless, you can check out Apex the first link down below the breakdown of XYZ slash Apex. Thanks so much to them for sponsoring this video and being an awesome partner with us over the years. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get your paper server made, assuming you just want one for your friends and family hosted on your own computer. What you want to do is go to the second link down below, and that's going to take you here. This is Paper's official download page, and as you can see, we do have by default Paper 1.15.1 selected here. It's selected if it's underlined. However, you can click on it just to make sure if you want to. Currently, the latest build is 46. I expect that to change very, very rapidly over the next few, you know, months and as this video is out like six months from now this will be completely different and probably be like version 400 something as you can see for paper 1.14 it's 200 and for 113 it's 600 so yeah don't be alarmed if it's a different version but what you want to do is just click that black download button there and it's going to download paper in the bottom left of your screen now you want to save this file but it's 100 percent safe to save as long as it has paper in the title and as you can see paper is in the title there so we can go ahead and click keep almost like firefox is going to ask you to save it in the center of your screen you're safe to save it as long as it has paper in the title now we go ahead and minimize our browser here on my desktop i do have the paper download we just got there on my desktop however if yours isn't in your desktop it's in your downloads folder and to get to that click the little windows icons in the top left for me bottom left of your screen that little windows icon in the bottom left click on that and then type in downloads right like so you then have this downloads file folder in windows in here you'll have paper drag that to your desktop now we want to go ahead and right click on our desktop create a new 
folder, and you can title this whatever you want. I'm going to title it play.breakdowncraft.com. Why am I doing that? Because that's our own Minecraft server. We have Grief Protected Survival, Custom Skyblock, and Factions is coming very, very soon. So come play with us. Play.breakdowncraft.com is the IP. I can't wait to see you online. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and take paper and drag it into our newly created folder there. And then once you open up our folder here, we want to right click and create a new text document. So right click new text document. Then you can just leave that titled new text document. No need to rename it. Then you want to go ahead and open up your new text document here and it will open up in notepad right like so. Then go to the description of this video and you will see these codes right here. So this is one gigabyte, two gigabyte, three gigabyte, and four gigabytes. That's how much RAM your server has, right? For most people on paper, you're probably going to be able to run a two gigabyte server, no problem. I like to do overkill, so I'm going to run a four gigabyte server here because why not? Copy from where it says Java in the description to where it says pause in the description. So copy from Java to pause and then go ahead and paste that here. Then again, confirm it does say Java and it ends with the word pause there. You can then go ahead and do file, save as, and then you want to save this as run.bat. So run.bat is going to be your file name. Now save type as, it's important you change that to all files. So file name, run.bat, save type as, all files, go ahead and click save. Now we can close out of that and then we can delete the new text document we created because we should have that run.bat file. Now, at this point, what you want to do is take paper, right click on it, click on rename, and then just type in paper. Now, for me, it says paper.jar. Yours may just say paper. If it does just say paper and you want to make sure it's all right, you can go ahead and click on view and then up here at the top, click on view and then go ahead and click that file name extension. Do you see that? So click on view, file name extensions. Now mine just says paper. If I click file name extensions again, it comes back and says .jar. For example, your run.bat file might have just been called run, but now it'll have .bat at the end of it. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and double click on that run.bat file and it's going to go ahead and get things rocking and rolling for us. Now, if you have any issues, it doesn't open up this, it doesn't work correctly, you have issues. It just whatever other than this one by the way if it says failed to load eula.txt that's correct and you should have had eula.txt appear over here but if that doesn't appear what do you do well first and foremost make sure you're not running too much ram so don't go ahead and downgrade that run.bat file by right clicking on it and clicking edit and lowering this amount of ram to 1000 right put 1000 here and then 1,000 here again, right? So 1,000 there and 1,000 there. And then there you go. You can also just copy it from the description. But nevertheless, check that first and foremost. However, if you're still having issues, what you need to do is go to the description down below and you'll find our tutorials on how to download and install Java for Minecraft servers. As you can see, how to download and install Java for Minecraft servers. Go through this tutorial and then you should be good. If you're not though, we do have a solution and that solution is the jar fix, which you can find here. And basically this is just gonna make all of the jar files on your computer work with Java once again. It's a simple program, download, install it, not install it, just download and run it and you are good to go. Now we can finally go ahead and double click on the run.bat file. And when you do that, you'll get this eula.txt to appear. Go ahead and double click on that eula.txt. And as long as you're gonna agree to the Minecraft eula here for this server, go ahead and change eula equals false to eula equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that, eula equals true. Then go ahead and do file, save. So click on file, save, and there we go. Now we can double click on our run.bat file and everything will start right on up. Now at this point you have a paper server started locally and if you do just want this for a test server, you can join it off of your IPv4 address, your local IP address basically, that we're gonna get here in a second. However, if you wanna make this a public server, allow your friends to join, allow maybe, for example, another developer to join, maybe add in, you know, co-owner of your server to join your test server, stuff like that, I'm gonna show you how to do that here. But before we can do that, we do have to let the spawn area prepare and finish up there. And then once that's done, we will be good. So as you can see, once that's finished, it has to do the nether now. I'll do a quick jump cut and then we'll be good to go. There we go. So as you can see, it does say done now. That is finished. 30 seconds to load all that. Not too bad. And then we can go ahead and stop this server. Because again, we want people to be able to join this if they're not in our house, for example. So we're going to go ahead and type SDOP and hit enter. So stop, hit enter. It's going to shut everything down. Boom, boom, press any key to continue, and there you go. Now what we want to do is click on the little Windows icon. For me, it's in the top left of my screen. It's going to be in the bottom left of your screen, but that little Windows icon in the top or bottom left of the screen, click on that, and then go ahead and type in CMD. You then have this command prompt here. Click on that, and then in command prompt, what we want to do is type in IP CONFIG, IP config, exactly like that, and hit enter. Then you're going to get a bunch of useless information. 99% of this you don't need, but what you do need is to open up a notepad document. So just open up 
up a little notepad document here and we're going to copy the information you do need from here into this notepad document. So if we scroll up here, the first thing we need is our IPv4 address. So we're going to go ahead and grab IPv4 and my IPv4, IPv4 is 192.168.1.123. Yours is going to be different. Yours is going to have a different IPv4 address than me most likely. That's okay if you do. Then we also need our default gateway. All right, so default gateway here. And you should have two default gateways or one that's just numbers. So for me, I have two. I have FE80, all that stuff. If it has any letters in it, that's the wrong one. However, if it's just numbers, like the one on the bottom here is for me, 192.168.1.1, that's the one that we want. So in my case, 192.168.1.1 is my default gateway here. Yours may be completely different, your default gateway. If so, go ahead and you know copy that over. It's fine if it's different, but it should only be numbers. It should not have any letters in it. Now at this point, we've got the two numbers we need, our IPv4 address and our default gateway. So we can close out a command prompt. Now we wanna go ahead and come back over here into our server, right into our server folder here. And then we wanna scroll down until we see the server.properties file. See that, server.properties. Now when I double click on this, it's gonna open with Notepad. It might prompt you, like what do you wanna open it with? You wanna open it with Notepad. Now what we wanna do is copy this IPv4 address here, come over here to where it says server dash IP equals see that server dash IP equals paste that in and then go ahead and do file save right like so now we're done with the server.properties file at this point we need to port forward so if you were wondering how do I join the server if I just want it to be me playing on it well you can go ahead and copy your IPv4 address here paste that into Minecraft and you'll be good to go fun fact you can also join off of your default gateway pretty cool stuff but if you want your friends or other people to be able to join the server we're gonna need to port forward luckily we've helped millions of people do that so let's go ahead and pour forward the first step is actually going to be opening up your browser and then from your browser you want to open up a brand spanking new tab in this new tab in your browser we want to go ahead and take the default gateway right that we got from our IP config search there. So this default gateway, go ahead and take it, copy it, and then paste it into your browser right where you would normally type in breakdowncraft.com or youtube.com or anything like that. Right where you would normally type in a website, go ahead and paste in that default gateway and hit enter. Then it's gonna open up something that most likely looks completely different from what you see on your screen right now. Now there'll be one similarity and that one similarity is the login box. You will have a login box right here, something like this. It might not be right here, it might be over here. It might be at the top of your screen, just pop down from the top. It might be at the bottom of your screen. I don't know, but you're probably going to have a login box there. Now, what do you enter in that login box? Well, that's gonna be your router's username and password, which you can find from our tutorial in the description down below. This is our in-depth guide on how to find your router's password. It goes through every single step of the process, methods one through five there. Most people, however, find it by method three, and then they're good to go. Once you've got your router's password using this tutorial, you can come back and paste it right on into here, get it all set up, and then sign in. Now again, when you log into your router, it's most likely going to look completely different from my router. And that's perfectly okay. Why is that okay? Well, two reasons. One, we have an in-depth tutorial that goes through all the top routers today, and that's going to be helpful to you. But two, we also are going to go through all the different names that you can call and port forward can be called and anything like that. And three, I know I said there was two reasons, but three, you're not going to break anything. You're not going to break anything in your router. Just don't save any of the changes unless it's the port forward. For example, if you were to go in here and click add device or something and it was to mess something up and what even was that and I don't know and it, it, that's fine. It's okay. You can click around. Turn on parental controls. That's fine. It's okay because you can turn it right back off if you accidentally do that, right? Don't save any changes unless it's your port forward and you're good to go. You have nothing to worry about. Nevertheless, at this point, what about our tutorial? Well, we do have an in-depth tutorial on how to port forward your router, and this video right here goes through all of the top routers today, Asus, Cisco, Netgear. It's all covered in depth in that video. And even if your router isn't in that video, I'd still recommend watching it. And the reason for that is because most of the routers have the same software, very similar software at least, as other routers out there, right? So if you watch through all of that, and you pick up all the different terms and where port 40 can be on all these different routers, I guarantee when you log into your router, you're gonna be, I'm gonna guess it's probably in here. And then it's probably here and boom, there it is, right? Because you've watched all these, and you've gathered information of all these different routers. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and get this done. So we're gonna go ahead on, for me, it is in security. For you, it may be an advanced. It may be an advanced advanced. It might be an apps in gaming. It might be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It might be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It might be in NAT triggering, NAT triggering. It might be port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be NAT forwarding. 
NAT port forwarding, NAT port forwarding, right? And again, it could be apps and gaming. So for me, it is in apps and gaming after it is in security. Then for me, it is in single port forwarding, right? So there we go. There's port forwarding. We have found it here. Now for you, you're probably going to have a bunch of boxes is all the way down the page, or you might have a thing where you do need to add a new port forward. Either way, you want to just go ahead and start entering information into these boxes here. Now for application name or ID, this is just so you can identify what the port forward is for. For me, it is Minecraft, obviously, and for you, it is as well. Now, anything to do with the word port. If it's port one, port two, external port, internal port, outside port, inside port, anything to do with the word port. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to enter in 25565, right, like so. Guess what? There's that handy dandy word, port. What do we do when we see the word ports? Well, we enter in 25565, right, like so. Protocol, it's going to be both or TCP slash UDP or UDP slash TCP. Either way, you want to make sure both protocols are selected. However, for whatever reason you can't select both, just do this twice. Once for the TCP protocol and once for the UDP protocol, leaving everything else the same. Now for device IP, this is going to be our IPv4 address that we got earlier. So in my case, 192.168.1.123. For you, you might have just a device location with a big drop down box. With the, if that's the case, just select your computer, the computer that you're starting the server on, select that one, and you're good to go. Now at this point, most people are good to go. You've port forwarded, just click save, click apply, whatever. However, in some cases, you do need your public or external IP for your port forward. If that's the case, perfectly fine, because guess what? Every single person watching this video right now needs their public IP address. You can find your public IP address here using the description, link in the description down below, what is my IP, and it's going to take you here. Now the IP that we're specifically interested in is this one, our IPv4 address right there. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. But as you can see, the IPv6 address is blurred out or blacked out. The location is blacked out. My ISP is blacked out. Why is that? Because that is all information that you can get from your IP address. Your location, your ISP, all of that can be grabbed from your location. This actually can go more in depth than this, right? You can find latitude and longitude coordinates from your IP address. So it's very, very important that you only give this to friends and family and people you trust. And that's why Apex Minecraft hosting is who we recommend if you want a public server. This is not the way to host a public server. But from here, go ahead and copy where it says my IPv4 address is. Go ahead and copy your IPv4 address there. Obviously all blacked out for me. You can't see 211 there. That's gonna show the same in Minecraft here in a second. But other than that, all blacked out. Now we can go ahead and come back over to our port forward if we need to, enter that in, apply, okay, save changes, everything we need to do. And now guess what? The hard part is over. You have port forwarded for your Minecraft server. We're gonna go ahead and double click on that run.bat file to get our server starting right on up. Once that server is started up, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Minecraft 1.15. Dot one. So come in here, I'm just going to select latest release 1.15.1. Now I am going to wait until the server starts. For some reason, sometimes when you launch Minecraft while a server is starting, Java freaks out a little bit and it crashes Minecraft. So what we're going to do is just wait for that to start up. And then once we see done there, we can go ahead and click play on Minecraft and uh, launch 1.15.1 right on up. Now, at this point, your server is started. You'll be able to join it. You might not be able to join it off of your public IP address. If you can't, you're just going to use that local IPv4 address that we had here, right? This IP right here is what you're going to use if you can't join off of your public IP. No worries if you can't, but if your friends can't, then you need to enable people to be able to join your server through your firewall. Could be a firewall on your router, could be Windows Defender, but you need to allow Java, your IP address, all that stuff to allow those connections through. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on multiplayer here. I'm gonna click on direct connect, and then I'm just gonna paste the server address in there. As you can see, 211 is still there. Now when I click join server, it's gonna log us right on in. As you can see, here we are, right on in game. Also logged us in over here. I can join via my public IP address, no problem. However, again, if you can't, that's okay. Just make sure your friends can because they are the only people that have to join off of your public IP address. If they can't, then you need to go ahead and make sure your port forward is correct. Or if your port forward is correct, it might be a firewall, either on your router or on your computer blocking the connection and you need to make an exception in that firewall. However, what if you can't join off of your public IP address and your friends can? Well, no problem. Let's go ahead and disconnect there. Click on direct connect again and then we're going to come over here, copy our IPv4 address, right? Just that IPv4 address we've been using the entire time in our notepad document and click join server. It's going to join us right on into the server exactly where we were because you can join using both your IPv4 address and your public IP address. However, your friends can only join 
via your public IP address. Not the case for your friends. They can only join via your public IP address. But nevertheless, there you all have it. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content in the future. If you want to see how to add plugins to this paper server, you can check out a video on your screen right now, which will show you exactly how to get plugins up and running on your paper Minecraft server. It goes through every single step. It's pretty cool. So you can check that out on your screen right now. It's also at the eye at the top of your screen and in the description down below. But nevertheless, thank you all so, so much for watching. My name is Nick. Come play with us on play.breakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server in the multiverse, and I am out. Peace.